Kidnap Sandy Claus, beat him with a stick. Lock him up for 50 years, see what makes him tick. Today's Christmas video, we're going to be having a look at the Diamond Select, a Nightmare Before Christmas Santa Claus Deluxe Collection doll. In Christmas Town, the holiday is a busy time of year, so no one suspected a thing when three trick-or-treaters walked up to Santa's workshop and knocked on the door. When Santa Claus answered, they stuffed him in a sack and brought him back to Halloween Town, where Jack Skellington, the Pumpkin King, informed Santa of his plan to take over Christmas. This poseable figure of Santa Claus is based on his appearance in Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas. He features real cloth costume, and is in scale with all the other Nightmare Before Christmas deluxe cloth dolls. The very first thing we'll do is figure out how tall Santa Claus stands. I'm going to take the Ultra Measure Tron 5000 Christmas Edition. It's the same. It's the same one, guys. There's something different. But the festive version of the Christmas Ultra Measure Tron 5000 tells us that the Santa Claus doll stands 11.4 inches in height in centimeters. You would be looking at 29, about 30 centimeters tall. Now, he is in scale, just to show you here is a couple of examples. Here is Jack Skellington. Don't worry, I'll bring the camera up. And also, I couldn't find the uh, other Sally that I had, but here is Sally, the Christmas version of Sally. You can see that the three figures, yeah, for the most part, are properly in scale. Santa Claus could be maybe just a little bit taller. He does come across a little on the short side. But uh, these are great higher-end collectibles if you wanted to put out something like this for the holiday season. By the way, I've also done reviews on all those collection dolls if you'd like to go back and have a look at them. But don't do it just yet. We gotta get, can't get ahead of ourselves here. Let's have a look at Sandy Claus. He comes with one accessory, and it is this candy cane. The candy cane is slightly off-colored, I guess not intending to be a pure white, Instead, it's almost kind of like a creamish, cream white. And then you've got some, of course, red stripes making up the majority of the candy cane. It does have some weight to it. Even though it is plastic, not that this would be the judge of it being made out of plastic, but it is a heavier feeling plastic, if that makes any sense whatsoever. There's a little peg at the top there, and initially I couldn't figure out where the peg went to. Sure enough, I looked a little further, and Santa Claus has a peg hole on the underside of his hand. You're simply just going to ouchie, 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 plug that into Santa's hand. And I guess it looks like he's holding almost a cane, even though his hand should be really a little bit lower. And I almost would be almost inclined just to drape it over Santa's hand, but I guess even that looks a little ridiculous as well. He does, does technically come with one other accessory, and it's probably an accessory you're not currently seeing. If we tilt up Santa Claus... Underneath, underneath this very large jacket, is this, this V display stand. Now there are pegs on the stand, and just if you want to look at the figure itself, he does technically have pegs on his feet, which I guess could aid for the fact that he would be standing a little bit taller than what I initially showed in the opener when I did the size comparisons with Jack and Sally. There are pegs technically on the undersides of his feet, would technically then peg into the stand pegs located here and located here. And then just for good measure, he's got this very wide waist peg, this waist clip that's going to clip around his waist. Unfortunately, Santa Claus does require it because he does have the trickiest of times standing. Um, you can get his feet pegged into place. Um, they are certainly not the easiest to peg into place. I find it's actually a lot better just to hold the figure, plug his feet into place, like so and like so. And then just, again, for good measures, you've got that little waist clip. There's his, there's his little Santa pants. 
and uh, the figure then can stand upright. He is still pretty small though, I have to admit. Once again, just reaching off camera, there he is next to Sally. I guess he is just a, he is just a little bit shorter, which I guess would be a little bit more accurate to the way he looks in the film. Um, again, I just really love these these higher end collector dolls because it, it sort of expands on the idea that you you can get the figures, of course, the regular standard plastic figures that Diamond Select are releasing, but it sort of caters to the market of those wanting the higher end collection dolls as well. So having a look at Santa, which technically he's not really gonna be going anywhere now that I've pegged him into place the way that I have. Uh, we first will have a look at his face and then we'll kind of work our way down. The face is pretty good. If not for the fact, unfortunately, he's got all this extra white paint, likely caused by the fact that maybe they painted the beard once it was on his face. It's unfortunate because it does, it is something that is a detractor to the figure, and when you are looking at it, you're going to see these big smears of white paint. The rest of the face remains relatively unscathed by extra paint. He's got the white in his eyebrows there, very bright, very bright eyed, wide-eyed expression there. It's just a shame that he's got all this extra necessary, unnecessary white paint on his cheeks. Uh, he does have the hat. The hat is glued in place, so you can't remove that. I don't know if you can, you can barely make it out, but he does have a mouth in there. It's his mustache that's kind of covering over everything. And then he's got a very long flowing beard. The beard goes right beyond the point of his Santa's uh, jacket and drapes actually onto the floor, which I think actually was close to the way it looked in the movie. You can flip it up and it's almost a felt material that they've used and then they've used, they just like put uh, kind of like a faux hair over top of it. Does have his belt, which looks like it's slightly undone. We can just kind of tighten that up. It has been elasticized, not the belt itself, but there's these elastic strappings that are keeping the belt in place here. The material is almost like a faux, almost like a faux suede, faux velour, if you will. Um, you can see how it's, it's kind of a more of a plastic nylon underneath it, and it's got the fur trim around the outer area here. It does look good, um, if not for the fact, I, and ever since I've looked at this, and I've thought this point, I can't help but not think about it. it kind of looks like, you know, those cozies, you probably if you're young enough, you probably don't remember them. But they're like cozies that would have gone either over like a toilet paper box, like a tissue box, or they would have gone over your kettle, like a kettle cozy. How old am I for, for quoting a kettle cozy in these reviews? But that kind of looks like, that kind of reminds me of what this is when I'm looking at it. It looks like it should be holding something underneath it, it above and beyond, of course, the fact that it's Santa's pants underneath that. Let me just flip this up. Sorry, Santa. This is probably not the side you want everyone seeing, but he's a very padded chap underneath all that, making up of these kind of holly white pants and the very small Santa boots underneath there. Small hands making up small black gloves. Um, most, if not all, of his mass is actually in his body than rather his arms and his head. Now, for articulation, it's a rather tricky thing because the figure does have like head posability, but I feel like it's difficult to actually rotate the head. His arms are, if you feel them right here, it feels more so like a little wire frame. So when you are bending Santa's arms, for example, you don't feel like there is necessarily a hinge there. You feel like you're just bending a wire frame. The same sort of thing uh, is also here for his feet. If I just, just grab right here, I just dropped the display stand, but if we grab right here, this is the like little metal frame bar that is attaching the top half to his leg. You can see right there, this is the part that you're actually bending. And it does bend well. The fact that it also uses the wire frame means that you have more of a range to bend from. It's not specifically a hinge here. It's not specifically a hinge, say, up here. It does give you the bending posability options, but you can do it at a wider range because it's a wire frame. Let's go ahead and grab the display stand, which I just dropped on the floor, and we'll go ahead and put Santa Claus back in place the only thing with this Santa Claus, um, above and beyond the paint, of course, 
the problem with the figure is, you know, he is large. Well, he is large also in the movie as well. So it does make things a little bit more difficult when you want to, say, pose him. You don't feel like you get as much... You get the range of bending him on the wire frames, but I don't think... It doesn't feel like you have as much liberties, so to speak, as, say, the Jack Skellington and the Sally that we already had a look at. One of the obvious points I should probably make as well is that these figures are big, really big. So if you are looking to put these out every year for Christmas time, they're going to take up a lot of space. Obviously, you're going to want to maybe put them on a shelf or I put them on my mantle, for example, above my fireplace, and that's where they sit. Up to this point of looking at the Santa Claus every single year, I've put out Jack Skeleton and Sally, and now I can add Santa Claus to the mix. Uh, Diamond Select have also released the Lock, Shock, and Barrel, which we will be looking at in a future video. I don't know if these are for everybody. It caters more, I think, to the market of those who enjoy a higher quality collectible doll than maybe, say, an action figure market. But I'm liking the fact that Diamond Select gives you options. If you are somebody that just collects figures, there's the avenue of collecting just the Nightmare Before Christmas figures. If you are somebody that kind of is more in the vein of dolls, and not someone that gets figures in their regular collection lineups, then these are a good market for that. Santa Claus, like I said, he's a little bit bulkier. He's a little bit more finicky when it comes to moving his limbs, just because he is a little bit more of a portlier fellow. But he's nice that you can have him on display with Jack, Sally, and some of the other collection dolls that we are going to be looking at on this channel. The really only nitpick I guess I could make is the fact that I wish the paint was a little bit cleaner around Santa Claus's face. I think I like this one a little bit more than I like the, the Night Before Christmas Santa Claus figure. This one feels a little bit more substantial, and of course the trade-off for that as well is going to take up a whole lot more space, especially when you consider the sheer size of Santa Claus's lower half, which is quite substantially large. Today we were having a look in this Christmas video at the Diamond Select Nightmare Before Christmas. This was the Santa Claus Deluxe Collection doll. There's still opportunity for me to put out some more Christmas videos. Probably not going to be able to get them all out for Christmas time, but rest assured some belated Christmas goodies will be still under the tree after the holiday season is over. So after Christmas time, still stay tuned because we're going to have a look at some other Christmas related videos. And don't worry, don't worry. If Christmas isn't your thing, there's going to be other non-Christmas related videos coming to this channel as well. A little bit of both to cater all the different interests that you guys have. If you've managed to pick up any one of these collection dolls for yourself, by the way, let me know down below in the comments section what you think of them. Or let me know whether you'd rather pick up the action figures of the Night Before Christmas or you'd be more inclined to pick up the collection doll. Just kind of gauging uh, where your interests are. As always, guys, thanks for watching as you always do, and I'll see you next time.